Okay, I was just doing final check, uh, confirming because it's been a week. I do have the right size shims. I got three more valves I need to finish. I'm going to go ahead and finish that up right now and uh, get this bike put back together. Hopefully tonight I will be done. We shall see. Goop. You know the process. We've been through this. This should go pretty quick. Mostly just the reassembly. And then label up. Oh, that fit perfectly. Oh, I'm so happy to be back on this and getting this done. We were at the finish line and I ran out of shims. But you know, my fault. Um, I underestimated I think what I was thinking is I was going to leave the ones that were close to the top spec. But I was wrong. As I was doing the math, I realized I could bring them all down into that middle area. All right, another 170. Label up. Printed side up. Tap it. That's so good. Look at that, guys. Put a little more goop on this one. I think I was too sparing when I started. Put a little more goop on all that. Can't hurt, right? I'm putting a little bit of this on top of each tap, but even the ones I didn't take off. So the idea behind assembly lube is that it's sticky. And it'll actually stay on the metal surface you put it on. Giving it a protection when you do the initial start before the oil can pump up. We'll use our finger and smear it around a little more. We'll add more as we're assembling. All right, I have the exhaust cam. The exhaust cam should be two. Two at the top. And we don't want to drop the chain. If you remember, that was a very huge priority for us. I'm going to set that in there. I'm going to leave the screwdriver in there. We're going to cut our zip tie. Pray that it doesn't fall inside. We don't need that kind of pain. And we're going to go over here to the side with this. Wow, look at that. So this is exhaust. Now, if you get your cams messed up, by the way, right on the cam, right under here, it says exhaust, EX. On that one, it says IN. I'm not gonna pull that one out, but right here, IN. See that? Right on it, IN. So if you get confused, you can always check and make sure you put in, and exhaust is easy because exhaust pipes are on this side. Exhaust. Roughly, anyway, right now, two is facing up. Obviously, we're gonna have to do some work to get two facing up and lined up and then 14 links pins across all right next and take ooh huh. that would have been bad did you see that it was one of these stuck to the wheel that would have made for a little crunchy experience if it got in there all loose. Now that screwdriver can just stay right there for now. No hurry. Gentle. Oh, the twos, I need the three. Where's the three? Oh, three's right there. So I had to move my screwdriver up out of the way to get a little more room to wiggle. But now, we're really close. Just for safety, I'm gonna leave that there for now. And what I need is two and three. You can see two, three. What I need is 14 links, and this one's lined up wrong because it has to be on the outside link. So we're gonna move you over one. Can I get one more link? Yes, all right. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Wow, I nailed it. These are still aligned. All right. Yep, my marks are still aligned. 3, 2, 14 links apart. Yes. Tightening torque for the camshaft journals I have to put on now. 10 newton meters. 7 pound feet. Oh, that's cool. They put zip ties. Oh, that's a really good idea. Just so the cam chain never moves. Whole lot of lube. There we go. Okay. I'll take a journal. It's funny because right now this feels really easy, but I can't help but to feel like I'm missing something. We'll go slow. I mean, worst case scenario, if you're missing something, you back it up. I just, just don't want to break anything. Go slow, go easy. All right, again, I don't know if it matters that these screws go back in the same order. I don't think it does, but that's me. It's what I did. Oh, wait, these inside ones need the, uh, cam chain guide. Remember this thing? Can't forget this thing. There we go. Now I notice on these caps, there are some uh, dowel pins sticking out. They're, uh, obviously they press in and they help align alignment so go down slow, really slow. If you feel anything stop, then wiggle and align things to make sure you're not forcing something to break. You guys remember this. This is a exceedingly slow and tedious process, so I will just fast forward through it. Um, I'm gonna follow the numbers on the cast item here in ascending order and tighten them down evenly. All of them are at the bottom. I bought this beam wrench years ago because I read when I was in college that beam wrenches were more accurate and less dangerous to use on a very sensitive motor, like a, like a motorcycle motor. So I need Newton meters. I think it said 10 Newton meters, 10 Newton meters. So it's a three eighths drive and we're gonna follow the order. And we're still, if there's some movement here, I'm not gonna just crank it to 10. I'm going to go to five, five, boy, that's not a lot of torque, five, five. All right. So now we're going to go the rest of the way to 10, 10. Ten. All right. Are not there. I missed one. There. That's why we go over it again. Man, I didn't even do eleven twelve. See, double check. Ten. Woo! I missed eleven twelve on exhaust. That's a little backbreaker. All right. Here's a little moment of truth. All right, I gotta get in here and clean up this gasket surface. Hopefully I don't get too much material down inside the hole. We'll put a little plug in the hole. And then when you pull it out, it pulls hopefully the material with it. The screwdriver was designed to remove gaskets Specifically, I need some light. OK. 
careful now. Don't want to scratch the precious aluminum, but I need to get this off. Oh, there she comes. Oh, we got it started. So you gotta be careful. When I was a kid, I spent a lot of time scraping gaskets that's how you learn from your dad you know if you want to be around him you got to do the work but if i got some paper in the engine i'd say oh no what do i do and he'd say ah, that's what filters are for <laughs> so this is 1500 grit paper i'm just cleaning this surface if you get a little bit of paper inside your engine you're okay is what he was telling me. All right, we're gonna do a little, hopefully tracing. Is it pretty clear? All right, I think that's clear as mud. Hmm. All right, this is what I cut out. Hey, that's really good. That's <laughs> surprisingly good. Carefully cutting. A minute. Now I gotta remember to cut these a little bit bigger than I've cut out here on paper. All right, so there's my gasket. I'll put a little bit of goop on it, but let's test fit it. Oh, you know what? Oh yeah, I like that. Test fit. Oh, it fits, does it? Really close. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh crap. All right, kids, after studying this gasket a little more, uh, and I looked it up online. It's only a $5 gasket and it's specialized. It has a raised uh, poured rubber ridge around these ports here. And these are some kind of oil inlets. And so I'm not gonna hack it with a homemade gasket. It's not a simple flat gasket. And if somebody went to the effort to engineer this gasket with those raised outline ridges of rubber, then it has a purpose and I don't, and it could just be high pressure sealing or has to do with how oil flows out of here and what pressure it's under. I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm gonna see if uh, our local motorcycle shop has it because it fits the same gasket fits on many, many different Suzuki's. So if they got it, great. If not, um, I'm gonna have to order it online which will just kill this weekend, uh, sadly, of production time. But I've gotta do it right and I'm not in a hurry and uh, I'll be back around. All right, we are back in the man cave for episode, what, 43 of the valve adjustment on the GSX-S 750. Uh, in the mail, first class packaging, I received a genuine Suzuki gasket for my chain tensioner. And the reason I needed this gasket, as you can see, there are little raised ridges all around it made of some kind of silicone or rubber. This thing has oil inlets that are guided. The oil is actually guided by the design of this gasket. Very specific, must have. I tried to make my own, it didn't work out as I mentioned previously. So I'm gonna do a little cleanup on this real light with some like 1500 grit sandpaper. Uh, very light, clean it up, and then get back to work. All right, now resetting this, we get very specific instructions from the manual. 
So this goes in. <laughs> Easier said than done. Oh, do you turn it while you're pushing it in? But it pops out as soon as I let go. Mm-hmm. It's like a funny threaded rod. It is a threaded rod, and it's not easy to do, and it hurts my hand. Oh, and it just popped out. Arg. Oh, it just won't stay. Oh, that hurts a lot. All right, we're hoping this rubber sticky glove helps. Ooh, it's a little slippery. Oh, it did it. So the glove is key. Otherwise, you get round circles in your hand and it hurts. All right, so it's stuck in there. Now it says once you get it attached, then turn the plunger head clockwise more than 90 degrees to make a little play if I can. All right, I did. All right, it's loaded. Now install the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Install the cam chain tension adjuster. Tightening torque is 10 newton meters. Remove the cam tension adjuster service cap and gasket. Then I gotta reach in and unhook the outer circlip A from the groove by pushing the step part of the plunger head with a screwdriver. All right, so I gotta reach in and release that little, it's hard to see. I gotta reach in and release it with a screwdriver by pulling on or lifting up that little clip. Mr. Gasket, you're so cool. Look at that. Just like it was made for it. You know, mine wasn't bad though. I've got a little bit of pushback on it. It didn't go all the way in and it didn't seat all the way. So I'm gonna turn it slowly both sides and see if it's okay if it just presses on that chain a little bit. It is going down easily. I don't have to use much turning force yet. Now I hope this is good because I don't want to ruin the gasket and have to order another one. That would not be fun. This one's seated. Just touched, made contact. We're a little bit behind on this one, but we're going the rest of the way. I don't see my torque wrench fitting in here, so I'm gonna do 10 newton meters by hand. We are seated. I'm gonna give it a little tension. All right, that feels like just about 10 newton meters ish <laughs> Don't ask, just some general mechanical feel. All right. I'm happy with that. Now, the big question is, we need light. Can I reach in? Can I release? If we gotta make some tools, something bent, something funny, we'll do it. All right. Oh, there it goes. It slid. All right, what I did was I went in on the, uh, it's, it's a C-clip basically. I just pushed it up and back and then it released it and I saw it slid, slide forward. So we've got cam chain tension and look, that sucker's tight. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, let's check our alignment marks real quick. Woo! Alignment marks, alignment marks, let's go. Our one mark is perfectly parallel. Let's count, let's make sure nothing skipped here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right, we're at 14 teeth. We're gonna go full rotation, nice and slow. Make sure nothing kisses anything. This is the moment of truth, guys. I'm going real slow on purpose here. All right, that should be just about 180. Coming around. There's three. 
there's two. It looks so good. I don't have any reason to think we missed anything. Didn't have to remove the motor. Yeah, boy. That's too much. I'm sorry. I will edit that out. All right, now we just got to verify that the valve gap is correct before reassembling the engine. Very nice. It's perfect. All right, I think next step is to put the cover back on. I gotta make sure that the surface is clean though. There is some, uh, I'll show you. There is some built up silicone, RTV, right here. I'm gonna reapply some of that and put it back together and use the same gasket I used before. They did not apply it out here, just on this edge and on the other edge. So that's all I'm gonna do. And that gasket looks like new, so I'm not gonna worry about it, I'm not gonna replace it. But I am gonna clean this stuff off. Comes off real easy. I'm just using my fingernail. I do not wanna gouge the aluminum. Boy, I feel good about that cam. Feels good, looks good. It's a little weird not doing it with a degree wheel, but I don't have a degree wheel. I followed the manufacturer's instructions and everything appears to be exactly as it was when I took it out. Worked out nice. Oh, before I forget, let's put the plug back in this hole. Cam tensioner plug here. It does have a gasket. I'm going to reuse it. It's like a little washer gasket. It's pretty hardy. I'm gonna put it back in though. There she goes. All right, now we just need special tool number 33, I think we called it. This is a very valuable tool. There's a lot of labor and time put into it and it saved a ton of labor and time. It felt good. I think, I think, oh yeah. Yep, feels good. That's done. Huge accomplishment. Oh, I gotta put the little cap on. Oh, this feels so good to put all this back together. Ah, this is the 10. I'm gonna put a tiny little bit of lube on it. Cause it's a rubber O-ring. Little bit of molly. Oh, I'm so glad to be doing this. For a while there, I didn't think I'd see the end of this. The torque spec on that cap is 11 Newton meters, but again, I used manual mode. All right, cylinder head cover. Now, if you got lots of money, order all these gaskets. I'm gonna try it without it. If I got a leak, I own it, so. You'll have to make your own judgments on that. Check and adjust the valve clearance. We did that. Apply bond to the cam endpoints of the gasket as shown. Now, by the way, when I stored this thing, I'm not sure I know what this is. I'm not even sure it came off the bike. But I'm gonna leave it here just in case I need it. I'm gonna clean this up too. When I stored the cylinder head, by the way, I stored it this way up so I didn't put table pressure on the gasket and create flat spots. That would have been bad. But I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up the best I can. Just try to pull off any of the goop if there is any on this side. Okay, looks pretty good. I'm just cleaning and inspecting. Don't want to just slap them back, back on if something's ripped. If anything, they're a little dry. But next round, I'll definitely have to replace these. All right. 
That's four. <sighs> Goop. Ultra Black, maximum oil resistance gasket maker. And it's for a high heat, high engine, engine applications. All right, that's really good. I'm gonna wipe it dry. And make sure there's no oil on the surface. I don't want the molly underneath the gasket. My dad always had his ad a little extra goop right in the corner. I think the Suzuki engine builder definitely did better than I'm doing. Okay. It's a little glicky. All right, which side's which side? This piece goes over top of your chain tensioner. All right, going for it. It's gonna be messy. Messy Bessie. Oh, it's so awkward. Oh, it's just wrong on every level. We're in. <laughs> Goop everywhere. Goopy goop. All right. Come on, gasket. There she goes. Wiping off the goopy goop. So, I hope it seals, because this would be no fun to pull this back off again. Now it says to oil these up. Oh, I lost one. Oh, here it is. Whew. Doesn't take much to get them out. Okay, I'm putting a little bit of lube on the washers. They're rubber, and I'm sure as you tighten them down, they rip. These ones are on there really tight. There she comes. Little bit of molly on everything, right? So you put oil top and bottom so they spin while you're tightening them rather than ripping. You don't want them to rip. Six millimeter. All right, I'm just gonna tighten these down evenly as possible. Now this is too long to get an accurate reading. This is too long, but I don't have short ones. I wish I did. So I'm gonna get a feel for it, for what 11 looks like. And go from there. I'll get the ones that I can get. I'm only turning it a little bit from where it is. Oh, it's the smallest amount. So the ones underneath, I'm gonna replicate that amount of movement down here. Oh, it's hard to do. That's about it though. That's about it. Anyways, that gave me a, an idea of how tight they should be and how far they should turn. So that's good. I'm happy with that. Looks real good. So no, we won't start it tonight because we gotta let that stuff set up overnight. So perhaps tomorrow, maybe, if we get ahead. Since I'm here, I'm gonna put my new spark plugs in. I got you. It is Friday night, and we're back in the man cave. We're gonna hopefully finish this up tonight. That's if it, you know, starts and runs and does everything it's supposed to do. So uh, right now I'm just gonna do a little cleanup, and then we'll get started. Um, I changed the spark plugs. They look great. They look amazing. They all look exactly the same, the same color. They've got a good quality burn. They just have a slight 
tinge of tan on that center electrode and all of this is the way it should look. This is a very, very perfectly running bike. It is exactly where it should be. Now the interesting thing is I tuned this by hand with the PCB, but I didn't use a dyno and uh, they're perfect, man. I'm pretty proud of that. All right, gearing up for the night. So first on the list, I'm gonna clean this up. It's kind of a weird fit, but you can see like there's a dimple here that lies exactly on that. This just lays on top. All right, time to mount the pair valve. The pair valve just has a little rubber doohickey right here that just slides over this bar. There it goes. Not a very sophisticated set. Now we're just gonna grab this doohickey. I'll slide this back a little bit. All right. All right. Pair valve installed. Pair valve installed. That's gonna go in the air box. All right, wire loom is here. I wonder if I should attach this before I put the throttle body on so I've got lots of access here. I don't know if it matters. Isn't it nice that they make plugs that only plug into one thing? There's no duplicates. You can't plug it into the wrong socket. This one's hard. Horn. All right, horn. These yellow guys go together. Now, I left these three clamps out here just to remind me to reattach this to this. I want to make sure you don't miss anything because it's harder to go back in. All right, and these are coils. These are to plug into my coils. So it looks like I've got everything here. Um, oh, I also got to make sure I'm going to need this. Ooh, I don't want to leave those behind. Okay. We're definitely going to need our throttle cables, coils. Coil. Excellent. Make sure it's seated firmly all the way down. Plug. Plug. I'm just cleaning off the tops. Since I got them out, might as well clean them. Coil. <clears throat> Work it down. When you're putting your coils back on, it's good to turn them a little bit and you'll feel them slowly work their way down deep onto the spark plug. That's what you want. Good contact. Make sure they're fully seated. Okay. I don't think I'm missing anything. Nope. Next up. Throttle body. You know, this is going together faster than it came apart, mostly because I was being so cautious. So fearful now. <sighs> Do I take the throttle bodies off? So here's what I'm concerned about. If I take these butterfly valves out, which I really want to do, will it affect the running of the engine in a way that I can't tell? Is it something I did wrong in the engine or is it these? You know, as good as those spark plugs looked, I probably should leave this alone for now. Ah, another time. I'm just going to put it back together. The smart thing to do is to put it back together. I'm going to run a little gum out through here and spray it with the air compressor. Just making sure no wires got caught, no hoses got caught, and we have a clear go ahead to push this down. 
Oh yeah, popped right in. All right, now I need extra long Allen wrench. Now this is such an exciting time. The reassembly is such an incredibly exciting time. However, uh, it's also a time where uh, I could miss something in the wrong order and have to take something back apart again. So I'm trying to be very aware of that. Hopefully I don't do that. All right, this is my absolute love and joy for Suzuki for having designed this through the frame shot. And however, the cam cap didn't have this kind of luxury. I guess they didn't think it necessary. Now I'm gonna go down where it just kind of makes contact, snugs up a little bit. Then I'll do the other side and then I'll tighten them down together. Looks like it has a built-in stop. You can't over tighten it. It bottoms out. Before I knew this hole was here, I was hurting because this would just be painful, sad and painful. Just tightening it down. And then there's a spacer right there it makes contact with. And I don't think you can go tighter than that. There it is, bottomed out. So I'm gonna put the ratchet on it and just put a little bit of pressure on it, but not much. The fish through here. There we go. All right, I have a wire loom that needs to go and be clamped down. It was just clamped so nice and clean right here, but I think it went under this. So here, here, yeah, you can tell by the arc that's kind of built into it from memory, it went underneath. So you see how I did this? This part of the wire loom goes across the fuel rail, sits on top here. We're gonna clamp. Clamp and clamp. You know, I buy zip ties every once in a while just cause. It's funny how often you need them. The three clamps, they called them. All right, hopefully this is a good clamp. Again, not too tight. My experience with zip ties and wires you can easily put a lot of pressure on the zip tie and crush the wire or slowly over time break through the wire and cause a short. So not too tight. The PCV is a funny beast. Because it bypasses the fuel injector. So this normally would plug into my fuel injector. So if you don't have a PCV, a power commander, this would just plug directly into your fuel injector because it goes from the computer on the bike into the fuel injector to tell it exactly where to set the fuel. But with a power commander, the onboard computer signal goes to the power commander first. Whatever number for the fuel injector gets sent, it adds 12% roughly, and then sends that signal uh, through its wire to the fuel injector. So it's just a little interrupt and it works marvelously. So I want to go from the ECM to the power commander and then back to the fuel injector. Isn't that genius how that works? I think it is. It's so simple. Clip on the top, clip on the bottom, clip on the bottom. This one will go under. Okay. Fuel injector. This, is, this controls the secondary butterflies. Connected. Oh, is this the underneath one? Oh, I should have connected this before I set it down. <laughs> what a pain in the butt. Oh, there she goes. You fiddle with it long enough and you can get it. This one goes here. And then everything tucks nice and pretty down here. Oh, throttle cables. If you move it, move the throttle 
full wide open position and that gives you all the access you need okay that's in all right you get what i did there i curved i pulled this all the way open and that brought it up closer and shrunk the distance for me and now we're in wabba wabba i don't know if we're fully adjusted it doesn't feel bad all right so tentatively i've got full throttle close it's not overly tight it's not pulling on it i'm gonna go ahead and crank that down there we go yes yes good good oh what do we got here What's, oh hey <laughs> look at this we found one <laughs> any others we're missing now i'm gonna put the air box on and hope we don't miss a step here why do I feel like I'm missing something? I hate that feeling. I'm gonna squeeze this on. It just went back together so fast. It scares me. Okay. Is it seated? Yes, it is. Tighten down the air box with Super Extendo Allen. Did we forget something? If I did, I can't think of it. Can't think of anything. All right, and then right here, this has a little clip on it. Hey, hose. This is from the pair valve. Man, one time I forgot to connect that thing. It makes the loudest noise. So if you ever hear super loud kind of popping exhaust noise when you start your bike, check to make sure you reattach that. Especially if this sounds up here. This is loud. Plug, uh, hose right here. Clamps on, clamp off the clamper. Now on this side, little clip up here, tight fit. Hose, hose clamp. It's weak enough, you can use your hand. We need a 10 millimeter bolt right here. I'm getting excited, guys. I'm getting stoked. This is secured. I believe everything's attached, plugged in that needs to be plugged in. Let's go get the gas tank. All right, we anchor it down first, and then we raise it up and plug everything in underneath. All right, I'm not even gonna tighten these down yet, but I am gonna lift it and plug stuff in. All right, these, this little clip, that one's a tough one. It's so sticky, it's so well sealed. Fuel line, clip. All right, inside. And I believe you slide it forward, pull it back slightly. That's it. And then we got a couple hoses here. Skinny one. Fat one. That's it. All right, I believe I can fly. 10 millimeter. Well, with this project, I definitely got to use a lot of different tools. So I guess it's fair to say not everything's a 10 millimeter. All right, all my ground wires are here. Okay. This is the moment of truth. This is always a tense time when you're not sure if you drop something inside the motor, something gonna break, all you can do is start it and pray you did the best job you can possibly do and then it works.
sounds like my bike. It's really quiet, it's very smooth. In fact, it's less noisy than it used to be. Woo. The entire valve train is quieter than it used to be. You know, I have heard about people taking the chain tensioner out and resetting the chain tensioner, and that alone makes the bike a lot quieter. My bike has not been that quiet in a long time, so I had some out of tolerance. I fixed those. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That was a big job. Scary job. It was a little intimidating. I don't see any oil leaks. All right. We have one more job ahead of us. We got to remove the scratch. That's coming up next. 